Classic Restos Trucks Edition Series 2, proudly brought to you by Gleeman Truck Parts, Premier One Products, and Shannon's Insurance, where you can become a member of the Shannon's Club. Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of Classic Restos Trucks Edition in Series 2. And of course the major sponsors are a vital part of Classic Restos Trucks Series 2. When you're after the best in parts for your classic truck, insurance for your classic truck and an opportunity to sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club, cleaning products for your truck and when you're feeling peckish and it's time to crack the good egg, go to classicrestos.com.au. Now these major sponsors have their logos on my home page. If you click on those you'll be directed to their websites for more information as to how they can help you. And on today's show I have returned to Chipping Norton, New South Wales once again. In fact this is the last episode in Series 2 of Trucks and what a fantastic 12 episodes prior to this one it has been. There's been Fletch crunching some gears. And the series has also had its share of bloopers. Guys that are the backbone of our tracking... It's the first TV show to bring you... <laughs> mud, 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 I'll give you bloody mud. Mud, mud, I'll give you bloody mud. Slip over and hit the ground with a big thud. I'll give you mud. One, 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 one. You're watching Classic Resto's Series 2 of Trucks at... For sake. <laughs> And of course we have more fantastic guys on the show, such as this bloke here, Brian. How are you, Brian? I'm good, Fletch. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Beautiful 1948 GMC. Well, I bought it out of Dural, it was, it was local, Marker Garden truck. Took it home and uh, restored it. So it took me about four months, this one. I got stuck right into this one, got it done fairly quickly. How bad was it when you found her? I must admit it was pretty good. Uh, although it was a full rebuild, but uh, as you can see it, come up quite nice. Doesn't it help, you know, when you've got a good set of rails and the cab's not too bad, if you've got, it gives you a, a slingshot head start into a, just a better restoration, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I prefer to spend a bit more money on the base product mm. and I think you end up with a better result. Absolutely. Yeah. And Brian, the thing is too, you spend it once and do it right and you've got a vehicle for many years that you can technically just do oil changes, put fuel in, turn the key and enjoy. Exactly, uh, this truck's been to South Australia for tractor show with a tractor on the back it used a half a litre of oil. Jeez. That's a testament to what, uh, what, what the truck's like. But they're a good engine, this type of vehicle. I'll tell you what, Brian, you know, if we walked there, mate, we'd use more than a half a litre of oil, wouldn't we? Certainly would. <laughs> Definitely would. OK, now give us a rundown in terms of your build time. Uh, how long did it take you from go to woe? Well, let's say around about four months. But I work very consistently. Um, and I like to plan my jobs yep. on start to finish. So that everything falls into place and that sort of expedites the build a bit. And not only that, but I, I do everything myself. Yes. I panel beat, mechanical, spray paint, uh, and now I'm doing my own glass work. Yep. So I don't rely on outside services, so that speeds the process as well. I think that's beautiful if you can do that too, and I think it's also special with a restoration to picture the finished product in your mind as you go. I think if you haven't got that finished product there pictured, you may lose your way during a restoration, but if you know what you want and you can just picture it, you're halfway there. Actually, that's what, exactly what I do. Before I build something, I can picture it finished. So I, all I do is is build it, paint the picture, so to speak, yep. and end up with the final result. Brian, tell us about the engine up front. Well, it's just a standard six-cylinder overhead valve um, GMC engine. It's 214 cubic inch. They're very reliable, mate. It's, it's only a splash-fed, this, this early version. The later version went to a pressure feed. But this took the old original engine in it, and gearbox, and diff. It's amazing, isn't it? Petrol engines in trucks, they just, they ruled supremacy, didn't they? Yeah, and... Um, very reliable engine, the old, the old GM engine, yeah. Dashboard's gorgeous, I mean the, the shiny stuff, we, we love our shiny stuff don't we? Uh, the upholstery, it's just uh, the sort of thing that you just want to get in and go for a drive. Yeah exactly, uh, and believe it or not it, it goes as good as it looks, mm. which is really good. 
Mate, the old holding up on back there, just a little bit of weight there. Uh, just, uh, I guess, sort the ride out a little bit and just ride nicely as well. Of course, it uh, settles down the springs, rides a bit nice. And, uh, yeah, I've had that for nearly 40 years, that car. It's a low mile car. Yeah. And I'm... I'm right into FJ Holdens as well, FX Holdens, yeah. I know it's I know it's the truck show, but I can't help myself. Just tell us quickly a little bit about the Holden. Right, well, I um, I answered an ad back 40 odd years ago in the in the Herald, and um, was a low mile car, 32,000 miles, and when it wasn't they weren't going to be home till six o'clock, so I arrived early afternoon, about two o'clock, and I seen the car. Well, I'm sitting in the paddock, and there's canopy on it, this car. So I, um, I spoke to a girl there who was, who was working on some horses there, and um, she said they're not home, come back at 6 o'clock. I'm thinking, that's not a real good car, you know. <laughs> so, so I come back at 6 o'clock, was in the shed, this particular car, and when he opened the side door, I seen a very small portion of it, and I bought the car there and then. You're in love, weren't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. OK, well, look, Brian, I, I want to thank you for time out today. You, you haven't just brought one truck. You brought two here today, and I really appreciate that. Now, stick around, because after the break, we're going to return with Brian. He's got an absolutely sensational B61 Mac. Thanks very much, mate. Thanks, Fletch. You're watching Classic Resto's Trucks Edition in Series 2. Of course, thanks to the major sponsors. When you're after parts for your classic truck, the best in insurance and a chance to sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, cleaning products for your truck, and when it's time to crack the good egg, go to classicrestos.com.au for more information. Back with more in just a moment. For those of you that have just tuned in, Brian has brought two trucks along here today. Just before the break, a gorgeous GMC truck, and now this 1965 B61 Mac. Brian, was this about the last of them? Yeah, getting to the tail end of them. Yeah, this one, yeah. So what years did the B61 run for? Run around about the mid-50s, up to around about, I believe, about 1966, they, they changed them, yeah. That was a, a good run of the traditional shape for a Mac, wasn't it? Certainly was, yeah. yeah. Um, it was a popular truck and it obviously did the job all them years. they just done little upgrades along the way. OK, Brian, tell us the story of this particular truck. Well, um, actually, it was an unusual story. When the news agency, and I always buy Just Car magazine, and I picked up and walked, paid for and walked out the shop and I, and I looked down was a Just Truck magazine and third page in was this truck and I've always had a love for the B model as most of us do and um, so I, I spotted it and had everything what I really wanted on it uh, and it was pretty much complete as well and so I made the phone call and I was out in Orange so I went drove out and had a look and done a bit of negotiation and uh, come home without it, but um, and then we renegotiated the phone, and I went out and picked him up. OK, Brian, so when you got it, uh, what sort of condition was it in? Well, again, the same to GMC, I, I don't buy rubbish. It was above average, yeah. need a lot of work, full build, just like the GMC, yeah. but um, yeah, it was, like I say, it was all there, something to start with, because all I had to do is pull the part and, and re rebuild it. It's absolutely beautiful. And you're probably thinking, oh, Fletch, you're going to start banging on about your burgundy red and your chrome again. It's just a beautiful colour combination. I just love those deep reds highlighted by the pencil-thin stainless and uh, the chrome work around your air cleaner, uh, the, the guards out the back, single bogey rear. It's just, a, it's just a beautiful truck. It really is. And it must make you pretty special when you're driving this old girl. Yeah, it does. Um I never realised just how much interest there is out there, but done a couple of uh, uh, street parades and, and the crowds just love it. They go crazy when this comes out of the blue. Brian, how do you go with the twin sticks? I mean, how iconic is that? Twin sticks and the Mac. Mac, not necessarily the fastest truck, but obviously the well, one of the most talkiest. I mean, you know, there's no doubt about what... Well, it's, uh, it's what a Mac truck won't pull. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, 18 speed, crash box, twin stick, as you say. So... Uh, the, the low ratios are, are, are just crawling gears, so they certainly pull some if they need to. Look, I reckon we should go for a run and we'll see how you, uh, see how you are on those twin sticks. Brian, are you, you, you're any good? I'm still, um, <laughs> still coping with it.
wait. I want to thank you very much for bringing two trucks along today, having time out and being a part of the last episode of Series 2 of Classic Resto's Trucks. Brian, I, yeah. I really do appreciate that. Good. Well, I've got to say thank you to you also and your show. Um, I've always enjoyed watching your show, particularly the truck section. Um, and we've now watched the car as well. And, um, and thanks for... Um, Bring us in on 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 your show, and uh, it's been really enjoyable. That's all right. Look, I'm mechanically minded. I mean, I've always loved my trucks. No one out there wanted to do a truck show or seemed to do a TV show about classic trucks. So I thought, well, why not? Exactly. Mm. So um, since I, I joined the Western Sydney Historical Truck Club, um, the interest has really grown, yeah. and uh, I can see that myself. Absolutely. And it's really good. Well, good on you, Brian. And without blokes like this, there is no TV show. These guys are the these, these guys are the heroes. These are the guys that that go back in history, part of our the the transport fraternity in this country. It goes back to their fathers and their fathers before them. And wow, what a history it is! Thanks again, mate. Thank you. Time for Jerry. How are you, Jerry? I'm good today, Fletch. That's yeah. That's the way, mate. Thanks for uh, turning up on such a beautiful day and a glorious 1969 Kenworth. Oh, it's pretty good. It's probably getting like me, but it's all right. It goes. <laughs> getting like you, what do you mean? Wearing out. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about a 1969 Kenworth? We've had quite a few of those on the show too. Good year. Yeah, well, the biggest thing about this is it's called a Seattle Kenworth. It doesn't have the original bonnet, but it come in in bits and pieces and was assembled here. Really? Before Kenworth Australia were assembling them here. Wow. So that's what's different about it. Jeez, what an incredible history. Do you know what parts of Australia this truck did most of its work? Yeah, I do. It was in the Litco region, cart and coal in its early days, for about three or four years. And then a fella right here in this suburb bought it, a bloke called Michael O'Connor, and he drove it for 36 years. Yeah. Cart and containers and all the stuff. This, it worked for Intermodal, which is a main Nicholas company, yeah. for 35 years yeah. until it finished. Isn't that extraordinary? There's no doubt about the Kenworth brand. I mean, you've only got to do your own observations when you're out on the freeways. It's like if you see ten trucks, you're looking six or seven of those are Kenworths, even today. Yeah, well, what's good about them, you can look at the chassis number of this truck, which is double one, double five, double one, ring up Gilbert and Roach, and they've got the fish on it. Wow. And they, they know exactly what went into it when it was new, and they can source a lot of the parts still for the truck. Wow. Can't do that with another make. How long have you had this truck for, Jerry? About five years. Yeah. It was parked up for about four years before that, yeah. and I pestered the owner to get it off him. Yeah. I know a lot about the truck, um, and, I, and eventually he, he said he'd sell it to me. So. so it's in retirement now with you? Oh, very much retirement, yeah. yeah. Like, in retirement mode, yes. So you can both, both retire together? Oh, yeah, just fade away nicely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I've said this many times before, it's so nice, it's like a tribute to these vehicles because of how hard they've worked, how hard the drivers worked, and now they've just come out the other side, guys have got them and restored them, now they're just sort of, well, living peacefully and they're in retirement. I just think that that's nice. Oh yeah, well it's very good, I mean, the truck is still, I haven't done it up like a real show pony, it's virtually in its working guise, I've tidied the paintwork up and got the signs remade, but I went down to Melbourne to do crawl in the hill filled it with fuel, switched it on and drove it to Melbourne as if it was working all its life and being bobtailed was a bit different but it was still a long trip for an old truck. They don't pull up real good bobtail do they? No, it was a bit hazy in the wet you know <laughs> but um, you get a bit cheeky when you do a few mile in it. Jerry, what sort of engine are we talking about up front? Lizzie got a 3406A Caterpillar. It didn't get born with that, it had a 290 Cummins in it and Michael needed a bit more horsepower so he gave it a bit of a grunt. Yeah. And that's the forerunner to the present C15 Cat. Yep. Drive line? The drive line is a 13-speed Road Ranger. It's got 44,000 pound Rockwells in it. And 20 years ago, I sold them and helped them fit a Hendrickson air suspension to it. Yeah. And I can tell you now, it's still got the original airbags in it, 20 years old. That's amazing. Yeah, back in the 70s, uh, you'd hear about the 44,000 pound Rockwells. It was such a, a strong name in rear end, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, if you had a big truck, they were the biggest best if you could get and uh, these rock wheels were actually built by uh, God rest them, a fellow called Cedric Abood from Abood Transport and I needed to change the diff ratio because it was a bit slow for doing the Melbourne trips for me and when I went looking I was informed that the spider gears could no longer be got the diffs were that old yeah. they were 45 so, years old so what are you running uh, ratios are they in the, the late yeah, fours three nine three nines yeah three nine mm. and uh, it pokes along at 1600 
RPM yeah. at 100 k's. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, three nines pretty tall for a for a prime mover. Yeah, well, I was looking for three sevens, but yeah. just couldn't get them second hand. But <laughs> three nines are good. That's awesome, Jerry. I want to thank you so much for bringing this truck along today. I know it means a lot to you. Uh, it's a beautiful old girl, really. I mean, just the the sheer respect for such a vehicle that has worked so hard, and you knowing the full history as well, just means so much. Yeah, thanks very much. It's good to be here and talk to you. Good on you. Thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you. If you're after the DVD boxed sets of Classic Restos Trucks Edition Series 1 and 2, along with other Classic Restos DVD sets and merchandise, go to classicrestos.com.au. Hope you're enjoying this week's episode. Back with more after this. Welcome back. We've got John now. How are you, John? I'm well, thanks, Fletch. That's good day for it. Absolutely, always a good day. <laughs> when these big trucks turn up, it's always a good day. Exactly right. The vintage truck scene, it's growing and it's good to be a part of it. This truck cut its teeth on the Sydney-Melbourne corridor, doing four or five nights a week on a road that was built for drivers. Uh, at night time, they played hard. It, it, it was They played for real. And, and the roads were built to be driven and... and the guys that went out there and did it, they knew their stuff and, and for the volume and the way the roads were, it was safe and it, 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 it was good times. These blokes in the vintage truck clubs, they're embracing those good times, those good memories of working hard, yep. working real hard, yep. but having a go and, and make or break having a go. Well, it was back in the days too where the interstate drivers at night, before they did their interstate run, would, would drive around the cities that day and collect their pickups. Yep, two pickups and depot, two drops and depot, yeah. uh, tarping, gates, you knew you were doing it. You, you'd done a day's work before you started a night's work, but yeah. you kept doing it and um, you kept feeding the family, it all worked. You mentioned too uh, the, the Hume Highway, I mean that's uh, changed dramatically too, just from, from 1978 to present times too. I mean the old road it was a very different road back then, wasn't it? It was a very different road, um, you knew where you could go hard and you knew where you had to slow down and well yes if you didn't get it right you're in trouble <laughs> so john where do we go back with this truck here what's what's the story how long have you had it have you restored it i have done little to it um, put the company signage on it um, it was good to ask dad would he like the signage on of a company that he founded in the mid 70s it was good to see the smile on his face that um, he can be proud of what he achieved i can he can be proud that I would like to put his company name on it. Yeah. I've got my young bloke here, Richard. Um, it gives him a, a direction. Yeah. It, it, it's, there's three generations involved. John, I love the GM. I mean, that's just, a, they've got a sound all of their own, don't they? Yeah, it's worth having it just to be able to keep that motor alive, the sound <laughs> of the motor. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're taking the vehicles out. It's not in a museum. And the people who know it, they can hear it, they can appreciate it. The GM's got a different smell through the two-stroke burn, and if you, and you can smell it's a GM. If you can't hear it, you can smell it, and it's it's um, you get a lot of trucks through a cutting on the highway, and if they're all overnight as running the GM motor, you could smell this that that smell in the air. You guys have got this disease bad, haven't you? Uh, it seems to be running very thick in the blood. <laughs> Fletch, I know this is the last episode in se series two. Look. It's great what you do. We wish you all the best and I know the guys within the clubs would be looking forward to more series and you going 
on the bigger and better things with the classic restos for trucks. It's Good on you, John. Thank you very much, mate. But just remember, without these guys, there is no TV show as well, so thank you. No, thank you, mate. It's a, it's a two-way street, and that's always good. <laughs> John, I just want to end it there, mate. Thank you so much uh, for bringing this truck along. It's absolutely beautiful. It sounds the goods. It's great to see a 1978 White Road Commander still on the road, mate, and doing a fine job. Thanks very much, John. My pleasure. Fletch, my pleasure. No Lovely. Thanks, <laughs> mate. With me now, Glenn Giffen from Glimmer Trucks. How are you, Glenn? Great. Thanks, Fletch. That's my right, mate. Mate, this is it. This is the last episode in Series 2 of Classic Resto's Trucks here today. Thank God for that. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is, mate. I just want to take the opportunity to thank you uh, for your support, uh, an integral wheel in the gearbox of this whole operation, mate, because without your support here, the series may not have happened. So I just want to thank you very much for that. Mate, it's a pleasure. We, uh, you know, the company's honoured really to be, you know, uh, part of the whole series or the two series that we've done now. Hopefully we can do another one. That'd be awesome. It's, uh, no, it, it, it's great. I mean, it gets those guys like today. We did a bit of filming and... The guys love coming down here and telling lies for a couple of hours, and it, it really is good fun, really. I think uh, the, the, the history of the fraternity, hearing the stories, talking to the guys, it goes way back, as I mentioned earlier today, to their fathers and their fathers before them. It certainly is a tremendous industry. It, it is, and it's good to see the older guys that are into this classic stuff coming back, telling the stories, things that I never knew about and a lot of people didn't know about what happened years ago. It's, it's really good fun. Yeah, good on you. It's good well, to Glenn, hear. Thanks again. And as I always say, if you're after parts for your classic truck or parts in general, go to classicrestos.com.au. The major sponsors' logos are there on the home page. Click on those to be directed to these guys' websites for more information. Thanks again, buddy. Thanks, Fletch. Thank you. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed the last episode of Classic Restos Trucks in Series 2. Too. It's been an incredible 13 episode journey. Of course, not possible without the continued support of the major sponsors. Don't forget, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show, along with other Classic Restos merchandise. Finding out information on a Fletch tour in 2015, and of course, how my major sponsors can help you as well. As I say at the end of every episode, until next time, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you for watching Classic Restos. Restos Trucks Edition Series 2. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au.